I think we can go ahead and get started, Coach, if you want to open with just some comments on the, the 1950 sign today. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, a wild, a wild morning. Obviously, COVID 2020 class. Uh, this has been a the most interesting class we've ever recruited. Uh, I think a lot of coaches could say the same thing uh, with, with, I don't know, I think it's five of the, of the 19 guys that have visited campus, you know, um, which is crazy to think about. Uh, but one of the unique things about the way recruiting went this year um, was the amount of interaction we were able to have with these players. Um, I mean, I have, I have probably spoken face-to-face -face via Zoom uh, with this class more than any class we've ever recruited, you know? And uh, so it's a very unique class in that I have not seen been face-to-face -face with a lot of them. Uh, I feel like I'm closer with this class than any class we've ever recruited. So uh, I'm excited about them. It's, uh, it's such a unique class because some of them played their senior year, some played half of their senior year and got paused, and some haven't even played their senior year yet. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a unique class. I think we addressed all, everything we wanted to address. You got, you got the offensive line was a huge emphasis, wide receivers, uh, defensive line were our big three emphasis in this class. Uh, and then, but I think we hit every, every position group, uh, and got, and got better in each position group. So, uh, excited about, you know, the guys we got and, and, uh, excited about their future and excited to finally get them here, uh, which won't be till at least April 15th, NCAA dead period lasts till April 15th. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for the things we needed and the, the depth we needed at different places, uh, this group has been with us for a long time. They've been committed for a pretty long time. And, uh, and we were happy this morning to watch them all sign and officially become Broncos. And we'll open it up to questions from the group. Coach, can you, um, can you go through, uh, what was the total number that you signed? 19. So can you kind of go through and just give us a quick thumbnail sketch on those 19 kids? Just yeah or two yeah uh i'll start o line wise you know that's the the bread and butter of every every team uh starting with carson briggs offensive tackle from traverse city central up there uh huge long athletic you know uh you know uh we have jack sherwin from that same high school so i got to see him when he was really young and, uh, and we've been on him for a long time. It's hard to find that combination of length and athleticism. Uh, Dalton DeWicke is an offensive tackle uh, from Eisenhower High School. Big, tough guard, probably. Um, really, really a really strong kid. You know, he's, he's, he's the little guy in the group at like 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 because the rest of them are bigger. Uh, but a real physical presence in there and, and a tough kid. He got hurt a little bit his junior year, which, you know, helped us get him, you know, and because uh, his senior year when he got healthy again, he was he looked great and we're looking forward to watching him grow. Uh, John Hoffer from Valpo, Indiana, another enormous human being, enormous, uh, could play inside or out. Uh, great feet for how big he is, you know, uh, a guy that's, you know, already over 300 pounds. And, um, you know, was a just a really, really athletic kid for how for how large of a person he is. Then Calvin Moraski uh, from Bayport. He's in Wisconsin. He is uh, they list him at six, eight. I don't know if he's six, eight. I think he's six, seven, maybe six, 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 seven. Uh, you, the film you watch on him. He didn't play his senior year. The film you watch on him, he's going to be about 260 pounds. Right now he's 295 pounds uh, and he's athletic. And uh, that is, uh, you know, those are the type of kids, you know, you see them at 260, you watch them run around, you see them at six, seven, uh, athletic, and now he's 200. I don't know how big that kid's going to get, but he's definitely tackle material. Another huge Wisconsin offensive lineman, you know, uh, so I'm excited about those guys. Uh, obviously, you guys, a lot of you know Marion from uh, River Rouge, obviously won a state championship uh last year and then got paused in the middle of it this year. I uh, love the kid. The moment I met him uh, a couple years ago when he was at our seven on seven, uh, just a winner, you know, can run the ball, 
uh, does things. He's a little bit different than some of the quarterbacks we've had. Uh, so I'm excited to work with him and, and, and watch him, uh, you know, learn our offense and see what he can bring to our offense, big, uh, athletic quarterback and, and a winner, which I'm excited about. Um, so here, uh, running back from union city, another Jersey running back. I'm sure Bogan's probably excited to bring another Jersey running back here. Uh, tough, tough kid. I mean, he was the golden gloves boxing champion at the age of, I want to say was it 16. I mean, he fought, and he fought over in, uh, he fought over in, uh, he, he represented our country in Europe fighting boxer. He's a boxer, uh, a tough kid. His, his stats early on in the year this year was like he had 14 touches and had scored 13 touchdowns or some crazy number like that. So uh, I love the, I love his, his toughness, his athleticism. Um, Jersey kids, we've had a lot of good Jersey tough kids here, you know, so he's one of the ones I'm most excited uh, about. I know we have, a, we have a, a lot of the heavy bags in our weight room. I know G2, our strength coach, is excited to see what a professional boxer looks like on the bags. All our guys think they're good at the bags, and we're about to find out what a real person looks like on the bags. So that's going to be fun in the weight room. Uh, tight end, Caden Morris, Sacred Heart Griffin, unbelievable program in, uh, in kind of central Illinois. Uh, they put out a ton of players. A guy with unbelievable ball skills, big, uh, can run, uh, and a great blocker. I think he's going to be a huge human being. Uh, so he's, he's going to be physical and he's got natural catching ability, uh, which is going to be fun. Then we have the wideouts. Uh, Tyron, Tyron Mason is from Elkhart. He's dynamic now. I mean, he, he blew up his senior year. Uh, when we signed him, he was a, he was a no star, I don't think. And then he ended up rising up fast. Um, it's one of the interesting things about this year is, I mean, for, I think it was eight of our, almost half our class didn't play a senior year. So they didn't really, there weren't a lot of senior year bumps like Tyron. Tyron went from no one knew about him to one of our highest rated guys. Um, so it's a lot of our seniors. So it, it's interesting this year when, when some people have played and some people haven't. Um, but he had an unbelievable senior year, uh, you know, very explosive, you know, returnery. They, they were, he does reverses and just every, any way to get him the ball. They do. Um, Jolly Parker, Mount Carmel. Everyone knows Mount Carmel in Chicago. I don't. I don't think he's lost the high school game yet. You know, a straight line, fast track guy, uh, receiver, and a really good player. He didn't get to play. He's hoping to play in the spring. I'm hoping uh, he gets a chance to play in the spring. Uh, excited about him. Uh, Henry Wilson is a two-way player. We're gonna. He's gonna be wide out here. Uh, St. Rita kid, another Chicago Catholic League tough kid. Um, and another kid that can do a lot of things. Strong, got hurt his junior year, uh, which kind of helped us get in on him because he was he was uh, blowing up early on and then didn't, didn't have a ton of film, got healthy. And, uh, and we're looking forward to watching him play in the spring as well. And then Malik, you know, from Palmetto Ridge, he is a super dynamic player, long, probably about 6'1", 6 6'2", 6 uh, only about 170, he's like a, a little bit shorter version of Jalen Hall, uh, fast. We got to get him to fill out a little bit, but he can roll, plays corner, does a great job at corner. Uh, really was impressed with that kid ever since we started recruiting him. Uh, that's offense. Defensively, uh, Aaron Wofford, you know, it's so hard to find a six foot, six foot corner that can run, you know, and there aren't many of them. And St. Lawrence, smaller school in Chicago, you know, didn't get to play a senior year, which might have been good for us that he didn't. Uh, cause he's, he's a long athletic, uh, unbelievable family. Mom and dad are great too. And, uh, tough kids. So he's, I'm a, he played wide out too, but he's definitely going to be a corner for us. Um, defensive line is, that uh, was a need for us. And as far as depth goes, Elijah Hawk from Pickerton North in Ohio is probably about six, three, 240 pounds right now. He's already got the size to contribute immediately. Um, great. Great defensive end, pass rush, explosive off the edge. Uh, you know, really tough kids that come out of Pickerington. Um, so we're excited about to get him. Corey Walker, everyone, I mean, I think people know his brother. His brother plays on our soccer team uh, here. His brother's a lot skinnier than he is. He is uh, a great basketball player, 6'5", 240 pounds, 
windmill dunks. I mean, he is one of another one of those kids that's body is ready to go uh, immediately. And uh, once again, didn't get, you know, had good junior film, didn't get a chance to show his senior film. So I feel like we got a pretty darn good one there. Captain of his, of his, uh, of his team. Uh, he's from normal, another central Illinois kid. And, uh, and then Tyson Lee, he was one of our first commits out of Riley in Indiana, defensive end, defensive tackle, played all four spots in the defensive line. He, we had him in camp for the last two summers, uh, really not last summer, the summer before last when we were actually able to have camps. Uh, he really impressed us in camp. That's really was the biggest thing. And it, man, you'd love to watch all these kids in camp, but uh, that one we, we got on early and, and uh, was the captain for his high school team and uh, is, a, is a really good player. So those four D linemen are really gonna help that. Well, and then what I forgot, Joshua Nobles, he's from uh, Riley High School. No, not Riley, he's from Woodrow Wilson. He's from um, uh, Karsman, Nick Karsman School. So we, we had a connection with that from getting Nick Karsman, the, the uh, quarterback that's been here now for two years. So, um, you know, we went into that school again, coach texted us, hey, I got a kid. He's definitely, maybe DN, but definitely a D tackle. He hasn't even scratched the surface in what he can be as far as his body. Yeah, I think he's going to be a 290 pound D tackle that's long and, and athletic and he's a hard worker, good grades. Um, you know, so between between Elijah and Corey Walker and Tyson Lee and Josh Nobles, we feel like, I mean, that's a hard position to recruit defensive lineman. And, and I think we got a lot of talent in that room and excited about that. And then uh, Vode, we got an inside, we got one inside linebacker, one outside linebacker. Zach Vode is from uh, Hobart in Indiana. He was actually an all state receiver. That's how athletic he is. Uh, but he's tall. He's like six, two can run, can jump. Uh, you see him do all that stuff at wide receiver. And then at safety slash outside linebacker, he just runs around and hits people, took his team to a state championship this year. Um, captain, all state player, a uh, really, really good player. Uh, and then Nalye Brian, he's from Oak Park River Forest in Chicago, inside linebacker, all muscle. He looks like an inside linebacker. He's got the traps that kind of go up to his ears and uh, downhill and explosive, you know, a great box player, Corbin moment type player. Um, and we're excited to watch him, tough Chicago kid. And then Jelani Willis, he's from uh, Tennessee. He's from Bartlett High School. It's in Memphis. And he is a, one of those long, you know, his dad played, you know, athletic family dad played in, uh, in college and flat footed come down and, and head hunt safeties. You know, he'll hit you. He, he could probably be a linebacker. He's just super physical uh, at six, two, you know, kind of like a, you know, AJ Thomas and a, uh, I mean, AJ is probably the best, you know, Zaire, Zaire Barnes maybe type body. Um, but he's athletic enough that he plays safety. So, uh, so I'm excited about that that group. So, you know, we we had our our positional needs that we hit, and um, but we we got one at every position, you know, and that's uh, and that's something you know we need as we continue with this with everyone getting another year and COVID being uh, going to really make it interesting in a couple of years as far as where, where your holes are, and to make sure you get a solid class, continually bringing in good players over a long period of time uh, just gives you depth when you need depth and you have injury years. And, and uh, this class is definitely going to do that for us. Hey coach, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Pep? I'm all right, bud. I, I was on mute trying to get my kids to stop screaming and uh, <laughs> the wife just got them out of here so I can actually talk now. Um, who I was trying to listen while they were screaming. You said the big three needs that you addressed were wide receiver, offensive line, and what was the third? Defensive line? Defensive line, yes, sir. Okay. Who um who out of need or just sheer talent might we be seeing playing right away next fall? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I definitely think depth-wise, I mean, the old lineman you're probably not gonna see. I mean, we got everybody coming back, you know, but having those guys have a chance to learn behind the O-line we got coming back is going to be special for those guys. But I really think, you know, some of these D linemen, you know, with, with the depth we have and the injuries we had, you know, that's something that we're going to, we like to rotate eight, nine, 10 guys at D line. This year we were trying to survive with five for four spots. And sometimes it looked like it, you know? And, uh, and so having a guy like with the size of Elijah Hawk or Corey Walker, um, 
you know, those guys have the body, they have the explosiveness. Now they got to come in and learn. Uh, but I, I could see those guys. I mean, Ralph Holly played when he was a true freshman. Ali Fayed played as a true freshman. So it can be done, you know, and then obviously wide receiver, you know, we're, we lost D, um, you know, we, we do rotate a lot of wide receivers. I don't know. I, I love all four of those guys. I don't know which one's going to be the one. Uh, they're all dynamic, um, but they're also going to be in the mix, you know, um, for when you, when you have, you know, you want to have probably 10, about 10 wideouts on your team and scholarship. And we got, you know, four that are true freshmen, you know, with the chances of one of those guys having a chance to be in the rotation, it's going to be huge. Um, but I think those are just pure opportunity. Uh, the wide receivers in the D line uh, and they, they, all the wide receivers have the size and the speed to play immediately. It'll come down to um, picking it up. But I think as the D line, Elijah and Corey are the two closest size wise to being ready. Um, and, and hopefully they can get in that rotation so we can get back to rotating, um, you know, eight guys through there and, and staying sharp on, on D, with the defensive line. Do you have any surprises today? Or that this was the 19 you were counting on, right? No, no, we had some surprises. Oh, well, all yeah. right, tell me. We had one, uh, and it, it, were, it was, I, I, I'm not going to use names, but we had one of our 19 um, that, that decided yesterday that he was not going to sign, uh, not going anywhere else, just, you know, didn't want to sign, and he was going to wait. Uh, we really only went after one guy, uh, Malik. Malik was... Uh, one of my favorite kids I've ever recruited in the summertime, met his, him, his mom, his dad, uh, was just praying that he'd commit before he filled up because I love the kids so much. I mean, he's great talent. Um, I've gotten so many texts from people in the area, um, you know, that, that really didn't even know we were recruiting him. We offered him early. Um, so we called Malik last night because we had a spot and said, hey, Malik, we've been recruiting you for a long time. We haven't had a spot since June. We got a spot. If you wanted, we'd love to have you. I mean, he was the one and only guy, or we were just going to sign 18. That wouldn't have been the end of the world. Uh, but I definitely wanted to call him because of our relationship and everything. And I really thought he was going to be special and he wanted to jump on board and he did. And, and now he's officially with us. The other guy did try to call back later and try to say he wanted to sign again, but it was too late. Oh. We had already moved on. And, um, and it was exciting because I was hoping Malik would commit. I mean, guys commit at their own rate and you try to, you try to educate them on the timing of everything and you want them to want to be here. And Malik was so close for such a long time and he just waited too long. And, uh, and the fact that he was still available and we called and said, you know, he was so excited, the smile on his face, his mom and his dad. And so it was, it was a crazy night last night to make a last minute switch from one wide receiver to another. Uh, but man, I was pretty fired up when Malik wanted to jump in. You need to get that uh, Bill Cubit Florida pipeline going again. Yeah, I mean, you, if you find, I mean, we've had a lot of talent. <laughs> down there. You know what I mean? We've had a yeah. lot of talent from down there. This guy's from. He's not really a uh, Broward Dade guy. He's he's from the. It's almost it's the it's the west side of the state. But uh, I know a couple coaches that are in that area that um, you know were pretty fired up today when they saw his name go across the uh, Twitter account that, that he signed with us. And, uh, and I'm excited. He's got, we gotta, we gotta feed him and get him a little bit bigger, uh, but man, he can cover and he can catch the ball and run. And uh, it'll be fun to see where he, you know, we, we really, really all these guys, I mean, other than maybe Tyron, I, I'm pretty sure Tyron Mason could probably play corner. Um, but Jolly Henry and Malik, I mean, they're all, different body styles, but they're all sky more ish, like could play multiple positions. We have just had so much success with those ATHs, the athletes, you bring the athlete in sky more could probably start at four positions for us. And, um, and these guys have that same ability, which is, which is fun. And I've, I've really enjoyed, we've had a lot of success with those guys, as opposed to just recruiting a DB or just recruiting a wide out. You find guys that both your both sides of the staff, like, and we got a lot of that those this year, and uh, and I'm looking forward to watching those guys when they get here. How do you say Malik's last name, Coach? Good luck. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say it wrong. Uh, I was told from um, from his coach that it's it's pronounced 
Di, Di Don, Di Don. They, you say the I and then you go to the D-O-N-N-E. I call him Malik. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We'll go yeah. with that. Yes. We'll go with that. I can ask the high school coach, like, I don't want to do this wrong. Can you help me out? I always call him a league, you know? And uh, he gave me a little bit of a shortcut, which helped. Coach, we're always happy when you get kids from our neck of the woods uh, down here. But you're not far. Tell, tell me, yeah, tell me, um, does this mean now that the February signing day is no more, essentially? With it, it really stuff? is. I mean, Early we. Night, we uh, hundred percent. Let, let, let me put it this way. Uh, you know, signing dates are only, you know, it's what, what the players make them become or what the coaches make them become. Last year I was sitting in the head coaches meeting. I forget which head coach was speaking, but one of them said, they said something about the early signing date and David Shaw rose his hand and said, can I say something? The head coach at Stanford, he goes, can we stop calling it the early signing date? He's like, can we call it the signing date? He's like, we all sign our, and he's, I mean, we're all in there. Every head coach in the country is like, we all sign all our guys on the first signing date anyway, you know? So it should just be the signing date and the late signing date, just in case. Um, I think coaches that start new programs need that second signing date. Um, I think that, you know, if, if some of the kids, I guess some of the five-star kids, if they want to wait till February, they can, you know, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I would say, I don't know the exact number, but I would say the percentage of scholarships that are signed today are got to be mid-90s. You know, 95% of scholarships are gone today. Um, and and then the teams that have scholarships left can use them in February if they'd like. But it really has made a transition. Um, and so it's, you know, and I think a lot of guys this year would have signed in February if if the dead period would have ended like January 1st, where they could all came and seen it, you know, but once they made the dead period, April 15th, I mean, there's really nothing that's going to change. We've been, we've been FaceTiming and talking to them and giving them virtual tour. I mean, everything's been on zoom and they've seen everything they've been in my, you know, when I'm walking around my house, they've seen my living room or whatever's behind me, you know, for six months now. So they're, they're very in tune with everything going on and, uh, but I am excited to get a lot of them here in person, and and uh, and that won't happen until after April fifteenth. Okay, one one more, um, and this will be it for me. But um, the this unique season that we've had with the the pandemic and everything, and the kids, the seniors specifically, getting this extra season. Uh, how does that affect your number of scholarships? And you know, you you, you look for a turnover every five years with red shirts, um, typically. But this year, um, a lot of those fourth year seniors will still be here. And even the fifth year seniors, from what I understand. Yes. And you've got the freshmen coming in. So you've really got six classes you're working with. I literally, in my matrix, I have six columns for the first time ever. And uh, it's a really, I don't think people really, and the NCAA hasn't 100% given us clarity on what their plan is moving forward. But people, if people can do the math, they can realize that we have been granted from the NCAA, much like all the uh, spring sports, we have been granted next fall where we can have 85 scholarships, not including our super seniors, what I'm calling the super seniors, you know? Um, so for the first time ever next fall, you're going to see teams on the field with 100 scholarship football players. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, so what I've been told is that that's only a one-year deal. So by the following year, we need to be back down to 85, um, which is going to be extremely difficult because our juniors, instead of having one year left, they have two. You know, Um so it's not a one-year problem, although as of right now, according to the NCAA rules, you got to fix it in a year. So uh, it'll be really interesting to see what the NCAA does, because as of right now, as the rules are written, um, you have 85 guys here that are should be here this year, this fall, next fall. You'll have the super seniors that leave, and technically all 85 guys should show up again the following fall. So your 22 recruiting class, there is none 
or or your number in 22 is going to be 10, 8, 5. I mean, the 22 class, unless some legislation is put into place saying we can have 95 and then 90 and then 85 and like slowly work our way back down to 85, if they're just giving us one year, because they give everyone an extra year, not just the seniors. They gave everyone. So now our seniors had two years, this year and next year. Our juniors had this year plus two. Our sophomores had this year plus three. So you're going to see teams, unless unless there's a ton of attrition, the next year when we're sitting here at this time, I do not know what the number is going to look like. I mean, every program in the country might sign 15, 10, or 8 instead of 25, 25, 25, 25, 25. Uh, it's going to have a major impact on next year's recruiting class in if they if they don't put up some type of legislation because right now the legislation is you got one year to go over and then you're back to 85. So it's really intriguing. I'm hoping they come up with something soon because we start we were starting on 22s in January. We'll kind of turn the page. And I think right now as of right now if I look at our team, I think for if no rules change my my next year's class will be about nine or 10 dudes max um, unless they change the rules and let us be at 90 the following fall you know and then 85 or something so it's definitely interesting people felt so bad for these 21s and how they had to go through recruiting virtually and all the really hard times they had to go through that are different uh, it might be worse for the 22s because they're not even going to have options there's just not going to be scholarships or spots you know, when everyone takes 25 and all of a sudden everyone's only taking 15, that's a lot less kids that are getting options at every school. So uh, this 22 class, this next one is 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 going to be really interesting, you know. Coach, I was just wondering what you can tell um, recruits just about your long-term situation at Western Michigan because you're, you're under contract through 2023, but we all know like the situation financially the Western, like you took a 25% pay cut, which was tied with Mike Norvell for the highest percentage pay cut in college football. So I was just wondering what you can tell them long-term and you know, you have power five experience, obviously if, if an opportunity came up or would you ever listen to any power five offers, you know, down the road somewhere here? Well, it's hard to, I try never to use the word never in, even when I'm coaching my kids, you know, like you just, you try not to, to ever say that, you know, I never thought we'd snap the ball 30 yards over a guy's head. I mean, that ball traveled further than any ball I've ever seen. Right. That had never happened before. Well, guess what? It did, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, the thing about me here and, and like Pat at Northwestern is like, this is home. You know, and people know it and people know, uh, you know, that I've been saying for 20 years in coaching that this is my dream job and that we have a lot we want to accomplish here and we want to build it, build it right and build it so it sustains, you know, that uh, we can consistently win and consistently be where we need to be. And so um, and I think people get that they walk in and they see, you know, my my diploma that hangs right to the left of my um, to the left of me right now. And this is, this is where I want to be, you know? And so, and I tell them that this is the goal. I don't really uh, chase logos or anything. I chase this logo, you know, that's where I chased it to here, you know? And so I really have a different, I think I have a different mind mindset that way uh, in that I really want to, I really want to make this place great, sustainably great, you know, not a, not, not, not a quick, a quick fix. There's, there's so it's, it, that's kind of what we try to sell is 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 the is the atmosphere here the people here I, but we're struggling i think everyone's struggling i mean that's not a secret uh i do think you see more people here jumping on the grenade because they want to help the place you know what i mean like if this was all about money i would have fought tooth and nail to get 20 percent or 15 percent. you know like this is about my school like if if it takes 25 it takes 25 you know and I think that's something unique about this place is the people that are that love it are are all in on on doing the cuts and whatever it took to get through a real live pandemic. It's hard to hide and say it wasn't real. It's still it's everywhere, you know. Um, so, you know, we're going to get through it. Um, I mean, to, to be in this town and watch 
the FedEx planes taking off and the Pfizer semis bringing the, you know, the vaccine all over the country to be a part of that. I mean, I'm no part of it, but I'm here, which makes me feel like I'm a part of it. Uh, and, and so it's a pretty cool thing. We're going to get through it and, and we're going to be financially better off because of it. But I, I, I kind of tell them when it comes to that thing, like they, ha they have to come to you and ask you, will you do this to help us? And, and those people that had took the biggest pay cuts are the ones that said, yes, I'll do whatever it takes, you know? And, and my coaches did too. My coaches took bigger cuts than most. And cause we wanted to see, you know, we wanted to see this, you know, this town and this school through this pandemic and, uh, and we'll get through it on the other side. You know, and uh, they can tell when they walk in this building and they look at our facilities that people around here care about this program, you know, and that I think sells the biggest piece that uh, that you can't hide what they've given us and what we're allowed to do and provide for our players. And if I have to take cuts so that I can continue to provide things for my players and, and give them a great uh, experience and our players talk about it that way, then I think. I think it resonates with recruits uh, that this is we're all in on, on this place and and it's it's really personal to me, you know, as it is to Pat and 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 Mike New at Ball State. I mean, it's it's just different. It's hard to explain, uh, but it is different, and I think recruits get a feel for that. And then if you could just talk about some of the general challenges. Obviously, you know, you said you know there's a lot of Zoom calls and you can interact with them, but there's nothing like being in person and being, you know, seeing the stadium, seeing the facilities and, you know, talking with people on campus. So what kind of challenges did that bring in and just kind of that element of it? I mean, just unbelievable. Thank God for media people. Like, thank God for the ability to make highlight tapes and drones and like all the, like tapping into our AV people of what do you have on the town of Kalamazoo? Like what kind of, what kind of stuff can I send, you know? And the willingness of teachers and our professors and athletic department members to get on Zoom calls, because it can't just be me every time or me or the position coach. Um, it had to be our strength coach and then our recruiting, our director. You know, we, we had different people in front of them every week because we went six months of doing this. Like six months every week, I got a call, one of these. And uh, that's a lot of content, you know, and uh, and everyone got involved, you know, which was really cool. So they actually got to probably see more people than they would have if they just came, you know, for one day or two. Normally, we say a guy comes once by the second time he could commit by the third time we got a great shot, you know, and here, I mean, by the end of April, I'd already seen him three times. And then we went all of May and June and July, you know, so um so it was really cool the amount of people that helped us uh, give them content and understanding. Um, and then we were lucky also when when the school opened up and allowed us uh, visits. You know, they weren't allowed to come near us. We couldn't see them, you know, but they could call admissions and admissions could give them kind of the general tour, you know, but we were in our bubble. No one can come in the building. You're not gonna see the locker room other than when we're FaceTiming or something. Um, but it was it was it was a it was a definitely a unique process, Seth, different than anyone I've been a part of. But uh, I did like the amount of content, and I, I'm hoping that um, depending on what the NCAA does with the video Zoom rules, uh, I think they could make recruiting better. Because if a guy wants to come here once or twice, but I could Zoom with him four or five other times, I could give him a lot more content, you know, and he'd probably make a way more educated decision. Um, than before because Zoom calls, you know, weren't necessarily allowed, you know, and now they are they for now. And so I'm hoping we find a happy medium where they can still visit because they only visit once or twice. Uh, and the rest are phone calls to be able to do some more things so we can have them in front of more people um, and we can just build our relationship, you know. Um, so I'm hoping for a moment we learn something from this and we, we find a happy medium. Or um, what what have, have have you got any idea what spring's going to look like for you in terms of spring ball, spring practices, and that type of thing? I'm hoping it looks I'm hoping it looks kind of normal. 
uh, it'll be different with our schedule. You know, we would normally go a little bit before spring break and a little bit after. Our spring break has been pushed back. Uh, so we will probably do our spring break, our spring practices in March, maybe late February. Uh, as of right now, we come back on January 11th. Uh, our guys will have to come back and get tested. And once they're tested, they can start training. That's what they need. I'll be honest with you. I mean, we had a, a lot of injuries this year, and they all were on one side of the ball randomly, you know, other than Brooks. Brooks played an unbelievable year at right tackle with a high ankle sprain. He did an unbelievable job playing through pain. Um, and defense, it was like nine of 11 of them were, were played. They did not get a training cycle. And it's so important that we get their bodies back where they can handle this again, you know? I mean, I keep hearing teams that are saying they don't even have one scholarship offensive lineman that they can't put teams together. And it's, so I know it's bad everywhere. It's COVID and injuries. Um, Cause they didn't get four, two months of a off winter program and a four month summer program to really get their bodies right. So I am so looking forward for the health, the mental health and the physical health of our players and our strength coach, G2, like they need to spend some time, you know, and and I feel bad for the freshmen. A guy like Marshawn Nealon or Jack Sherwin, who when I saw them as true freshmen, I was like, these guys are going to be huge and powerful and wait till they get with you because that's your biggest jump. After your freshman year, you have that first off season and you put on 40 pounds and your body, like you look like a guy that's actually lifted before. And Marshawn Nealon came back this year and had a great year, but he didn't look any different. I mean, he gained 15 pounds. You know, he worked hard at home with his bands or whatever he was working with. Um, but he didn't look like he's going to look. And, of course, then his shoulder, you know. And same way with Jack Sherwin, just that body type that's going to be a monster human being. And he didn't get a summer. And so he came back, I mean, in better shape. He, but he wasn't the normal shape. And he got hurt. And uh, so... It's, um, you know, and then, and then Corvin, Corvin got banged. It was just, it's unbelievable how the correlation between the training we tried to do, I mean, we, we had it a lot less than other teams. And I think we did a good job of trying to listen to their bodies. You know, I got to a point mid season this year, not mid season, but like three games in where their bodies were banged up pretty good and their bodies felt like they were in game eight because they did not have four months to train. So um, I'm hoping the summer, I just, I want them in the weight room. Even if they took spring ball away from us, they need the weight room and, uh, we'll get spring ball in. It'll be condensed. We're not going to spread it out over six weeks. We'll probably do it in four weeks, you know, three to four practices a week. We got a ton of veterans. Uh, we'll get out there. We'll have some fun. I want to get them out of the weight room to do a little refresher football. And then I want to get them right back into the weight room. Because that is, to me, our number one goal for next year uh, is to get their bodies back to where they can handle a full season. Because that's what we all hope for in the next fall is to have a normal full season. Coach, as the season, Coach. As, as the season winds down uh, and we're looking at the, the, the polls, the rankings, um, Buffalo, obviously, you haven't had a chance to see them because the way the schedule is set up. But um, Buffalo's playing very well, obviously. Now I'm going to give Ball State all they want on Friday night. Uh, do you think the MAC is being slighted at all because of its shortened season? Or, I mean, it, to me, it seems like Buffalo should be in the mix, and I didn't see them anywhere in the top 25 on they, Tuesday night. I, I, I thought they were. I, I really thought they'd be in the 20s. You know what I mean? It's hard when you only play six games. You know what I mean? I know people are given you know, giving Ohio State a bunch of, uh, you know, flack, you know, for the amount of games they played. And, and that's a, that's a real thing. Do I think that they should be, I've, I've heard, I mean, I've seen the highlights of them and, and, and Lance has got them playing now that, that, that running back is for real. And they have a good offensive line in front of them. I like their receiver. I like their, I recruited their quarterback when I was at Purdue. And uh, so I got to know him fairly well. We, we never offered him, but we were close, you know, and um, and they're a really good team. And they've, I, I assume if they win, I, I would like to think if they won on Friday, they'd get, they they pop into that top twenty five, you know. But I, I I know it's a combination of of uh, you know, you know, just being a shortened season, 
you know, and we're, we're way behind where everyone else was. And so I do hope, I do think that they, they are one of those teams that you're undefeated. You've played a lot of good teams. You have some really good players. Their numbers are fantastic. Their, their defense is playing well. Um, the defensive end's been banged up a little bit for him, but he's a real live dude now. Uh, he's a, he's a Sunday guy, you know, and uh, so they have tons of talent and uh, I would love to see them get that opportunity. And I, if they did, if they haven't already, I would love to see it after Friday that they, they get into the top 25. Tim, as a group, these, this group of 19, how would you characterize them as you look at this group on paper? How would you characterize them? Oh, that's a very broad question, Robin. Um, oh, but us TV and radio guys, we got 20 seconds, so we need a short sound bite. So. Uh, well, uh, you know, this group, I, w- I would really, the, I think the main, the main, they're, I would say they're, they're long and athletic. I mean, we, we, we have a ton of length here. I mean, I think every receiver is six foot or, or taller. Most of the, the old linemen are six, five or six, six. Um, and, and they can all run. I mean, they're all multiple position guys. I mean, our outside linebackers an all state wide receiver. Uh, some of the wideouts are all state DBs. I mean, it's, it's a very athletic, long and athletic group. Um, and, and which is, which college it's, it's, it's going that direction. I mean, guys like AJ Thomas and Zaire Barnes. I mean, we're getting guys with length um, in, in our league that can run, you know, and it's, it's just a, it's a trickle down effect as, as, as kids keep, keep growing, you know, uh, and to get, and to get a guy like Moraski, who's like six, seven and can, can run, you know? And uh, so it's, it's definitely, I would say those two words, when I look at this group, uh, it's what I think of. And I think they're tough too, but I don't want to say that yet until we get them here and we'll see if, We'll see if they're tough. You know, I think they are. I know, I know Zaheer is. I'm not going to mess with him because he's Golden Gloves boxing champion. Uh, so I'm not going to mess with that one. But uh, but yeah, it's a uh, it's. I think that was kind of the synopsis of the group. Perfect. Thank you. Hey, Coach, uh, can you tell me if anyone is enrolling early? No, no, I didn't. I really didn't. So many of them, at least half of them, are playing in the spring. You know, uh, and a lot of them wanted to, and with everything going on, it just wasn't a good time. Um, I don't know if a lot of schools are doing that this year. We just kind of decided that uh, that it wasn't going to be a good. And we didn't even know if we were still going to be testing and how the protocols would work, and um, so you know, and a lot of them have to finish there. I mean, is Michigan going to finish their their playoffs in the spring now? I don't know. I talked to. Mario on the other day and I was like hey are you actually it was this morning I was like talking to him in the morning you just signed we're all excited I'm like are you ever going to finish the playoffs he's like I don't know you know he's like we just got to stay ready um so you know the fact that a lot of their seasons got kicked back but there were a ton interested before COVID and then as COVID went on we just thought it would be best for everybody to focus on finishing their senior year playing your senior year of football whenever that ends up being and then uh, we'll get you here as soon as we can in the summer. Um, but yeah, so the answer is no, but that was kind of by choice a little bit. A couple more quick ones for me, if we have time. Uh, do you plan on adding anyone um, between now and the February 3rd signing date? Um, you know, maybe if there's some transfers or other types of attrition. Yeah, well, the transfer portal for sure. You know, um, once again, we, we haven't been in a hurry to do that at the mid-year, you know. But that's definitely going to be something we're looking into. Uh, not necessarily when it comes to that portal. There's not necessarily a signing date. You know, you don't have to sign them in February. Um, guys like Ladarius, guys like Jackson, guys like Bryson, guys like Theron, Tim Collins, Mixon. Uh, we've had a ton of success. You know, and I, I did not sign 25 guys for a reason. You know, uh, that we are definitely recruiting still, and. Uh, and there will be more people added. I don't know if it'll be on the signing date though. You know, Bryson, a lot of them just show up. And when they show up, we put them on, you know, uh, you might see it on Twitter, you know, or something like that, but, but it's not an official because you can only sign one NLI. You sign one, you know, and they, and all the transfer portal guys already signed it, you know? So uh, we will be looking, 
we, we signed 19 of 25 so that we have flexibility uh, as we look towards next year. And uh, we will be over the next seven, eight months be looking hard um, to find pieces that we think uh, like those players I just mentioned that can come in and help our team next fall. All right, um, and last one for me. Uh, can you tell us who the scout team players of the year were for this year? You know what? We That's a good question. We did not have scout team players this year. We actually, with as limited as number as we had, uh, for the first time in the history, we, we went against each other for the most part. You know what I mean? So um, with COVID, you could not afford to take a whole set of D linemen and send them down to our side of the field. You know, they had to know the defense. They had to learn. Um, so we, we actually had to shorten individual and kind of give look teams for each other. In fact, that's how I, I mean, I ended up running the, one of the scout team offensive cards um, because with our two. So we'd put our two huddle and our three huddle together in two huddles and we'd give, the, we'd give our defense looks. You know, and then we take our two and three defense and give looks to our first offense. And uh, and we did that so that we needed everyone because one COVID test and your 3D linemen are your starters. And they haven't even been on that end of the field all year or all week. They don't even know what the calls are, what the game plan is, you know. Normally we have separate um, scout team meetings where they have the GAs meet with them and show them this is the look we're giving them this week. Like I needed them all in the meetings. Like you need to learn the system because of COVID and how, it, how quickly you can go from your first stringer to your fifth, you know? So, uh, so we didn't have them this year. We, we serviced each other. Uh, we did lose a little bit of individual time to do that because it takes longer, you know? Um, you can't have them going on at the same time. You have an offensive team and a defensive team where the offense is getting the looks and then the defense is getting the looks, but everyone's gotta be there for it. And um, so, yeah, it was definitely, even that was different this year, Pat. Everything was different, you know? And uh, you had to be prepared for, you know, your, your four string quarterback cannot go down there and just run their plays because he might start on Saturday because the 48 hour COVID test and the 24 hour COVID test could take your first three out. So, uh, so yeah, we didn't, we didn't have any. That's a long answer to a short, easy question. You, know? you guys are getting used to that by now, aren't you? Anything else? Um, I guess I'll throw one more out there. Um, Hrabowski, uh, you know, he is a quarterback unlike any that you've recruited so far, uh, just the things he can do with his legs. Yep. Um, could you talk about um, just kind of the what you saw in him and how you think um, he's a good fit for uh, your scheme? Well, yeah, he took – he. well, the, the one thing you want to learn about scheme is your scheme better be flexible. Like your, your scheme better be able to work with, you know, a John Wasink who – can run around pretty well, you know, and then a guy like, you know, Caleb, who's more of a pocket guy, you know, and, and then obviously have a running quarterback. So there's just so many things you want to be able to do. The more they can run, the better. I, I love the kid. He, they came to our seven on seven and went to the championship. So I've got to see the kid throw it and he can throw it. Uh, things I would like to clean up with his throwing motion, um, but he's accurate. Um, he's, super coachable I mean wants to learn Camming just a sponge uh, and that's so much important that's such an important part of being a quarterback is the want to to learn everything and why was the ball high and away where's my hip where's my shoulder I mean every little nuance of the of the position so I think he throws the ball well I think I think we can get him to throw the ball great uh, but he's a winner and man he can run the ball he's hard to tackle um, so I know a lot of a lot of places were recruiting him as different things. You know, I think Kentucky wanted him as a safety. Uh, Temple wanted him as an outside linebacker, you know, and, and man, everything runs through the quarterback. I said, I don't, you can, I, you can play those other positions. That's great. I want you at quarterback. I want to see, I'm going to give you every single opportunity to play this position. Cause with a guy like you, you, you can actually expand our playbook. You know, there's things that are in our playbook that I would never call with Caleb that I can actually call, you know? I mean, the line can execute it. It's just, can I have, is it gonna make any sense uh, to run with, with anyone else but him? So, um, and because of those abilities, I could see him having a package immediately. You know what I mean? If there's some things he could do, um, you know, that he could maybe do in the fall if he's ready, you know, that 
throw it in because because if, if he can throw it, he'd he'd have be a guy that we could we could put in to do some things. So I love having guys with different talents. I love I love having Ladarius stand next to Sean Tyler because they're opposites. One's huge, one's little and fast, and it, it gives you so much variety in what you can do. And and same way at wideouts, you got Sky and Jalen. You know, you just you like having the different types of abilities and strengths and having a chance uh, to bring in a guy, a quarterback with different uh, talents, you know, that ne- we don't necessarily have in that room, that one we can use. He still has to be able to play the quarterback position. And he has the want to, to do that. He's a proven winner. And uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see what can we expand? You know, I look at the, I look at the national rankings offensively and we're in the top 20 in most of them. And, and, and you, know, you want to get better. You know what I mean? Like how, how can we continue to expand? Well, you know, what are we, what are we not doing that we can do to get better, you know? And, uh, and guys like that and different talent pools coming in is, are the things we can use to hopefully continue to push the needle uh, offensively and be better.